I now work through a second example in which I find the equation of a cubic polynomial from its curve. So I'm just drawing the x and y grid here, so that's y, that's x, and this time the cubic polynomial looks something like this. It increases, crosses the y-axis, crosses the x-axis, then goes back down, touches the x-axis, and shoots back upwards. And I just add arrows on either end of the curve to say that it goes on forever this way. Next, I'll say that it crosses the x-axis at 1, and it touches it at 3, and that it crosses the y-axis at negative 18. And as you've probably noticed, this is not drawn to scale. Now, we need to find this cubic polynomial's equation. And since it's a cubic, we know that in standard form, its equation has to look like this. y equals to ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. But just as in the previous example I worked through, I'm not going to directly find the coefficients a, b, c, and d. Instead, I'm going to find this polynomial's equation in its factored form. Once that's done, we'll be able to find it in standard form if needs be. So let's see how that's done. Looking at this curve, the first thing I would like to draw your attention towards is the fact that unlike in the previous example I worked through, this curve only crosses or touches the x-axis twice. In the first example, the curve crossed the x-axis three times. And that made it quite straightforward to write the polynomial's equation in its factored form. Here, on the other hand, we can see that the curve crosses the x-axis when x equals to 1, and it touches the x-axis at x equals to 3. And I say touches the x-axis because it doesn't actually cross it. Indeed, we can see quite clearly that the curve remains above the x-axis on either side of x equals to 3, so it definitely doesn't cross it. When that happens, here's how to write it in its factored form. We write y equals to a times x minus 1, so I'll just write that there, that's x minus 1, close the parentheses, times x minus 3, which I write here, that's 3. But this time, because at x equals to 3, the curve only touches the x-axis, we raise that x minus 3 to the power of 2. And I'll go ahead and box that intermediate result. There we go. And it's worth pointing out that when the curve touches the x-axis in this way, and we raise the parentheses to the power of 2, we say that the zero or root at x equals to 3 has multiplicity of 2. That being said, all we need to find now is the leading coefficient a. Well, looking at the curve we have here, as we go from left to right, it's clear that we're dealing with an increasing cubic polynomial. Indeed, if we were to carry on further past this x equals to 3, the curve would go upwards forever. So one thing we know for sure is that the leading coefficient a is positive. But what's its actual value? Well, to find a, all we need are the x and y coordinates of any point along the curve's length other than the two x-intercepts, or two zeros, we just used. Looking at the graph we're given here, we can see that we're given its y-intercept and its exact coordinates are 0, negative 18. To find a, all we have to do is replace every x we see by 0, and the y we see by negative 18. Here's what I mean. I'll just go ahead and say, using, using the y-intercept 0, negative 18, our equation becomes negative 18, which equals to a times, in parentheses, 0 minus 1 times, in parentheses, 0 minus 3 squared, where all I've done is copy this equation, and I've replaced y by negative 18, and the x's I see by 0. Now, taking care of the parentheses here, this becomes negative 18 equals to a times 0 minus 1, which is negative 1, times 0 minus 3, which is negative 3, squared. That becomes negative 18, which equals to a times negative 1, times negative 3 squared, which is 9. In turn, that becomes negative 18, which equals to a times negative 1, which is negative a, times 9. So that's negative 9a. Finally, dividing both sides of this equation by negative 9, we obtain negative 18 over negative 9 equals to a, 
In other words, 2 equals to a, or simply a equals to 2. And we now have the value of this cubic polynomial's leading coefficient. And that's 2. Now, combining these two results, we can write this cubic polynomial's equation in its factored or factorized form. And we can go ahead and state that its equation is y equals to 2 times, in parentheses, x minus 1, times x minus 3 squared. And there we go. And I'll box that like so. We've just found the equation in its factored form. That's factored form. Just as I said when working through the previous example, in many exams we'll be able to stop here. Indeed, many exam questions just ask us for the polynomial's equation in its factored form. But if ever we need to write its equation in standard form, like what we have written here in yellow, all we have to do is open up the parentheses we have here. And I'll do that in gray in this region here. So, starting from y equals to 2 times x minus 1 times x minus 3 squared, I start by taking care of this x minus 3 squared. That leads to 2 times x minus 1 times x squared minus 6x plus 9. I now multiply the x minus 1 and this second pair of parentheses together, and that leads to 2 times x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x minus x squared plus 6x minus 9. I now gather like terms inside this pair of parentheses, which leads to 2 times x cubed minus 6x squared minus x squared, so that's minus 7x squared plus 9x plus 6x, so that's plus 15x, and we have a minus 9 at the end there. Finally, I distribute the 2 across the parentheses, which leads us to the equation written in standard form. That's y equals to 2x cubed minus 14x squared plus 30x minus 18. And we're done. We've just found this polynomial's equation in its standard form. And I'm just boxing that in blue there, and I'll write standard, standard form. And there we go. That's it for this second example in which I find the equation of a cubic polynomial in both factored form and standard form using the values of x at which it crosses or touches the x-axis. And that's it for this tutorial.